If you're trying to stream high quality video, you've probably felt completely overwhelmed. You've searched for names like OBS, StreamYard, and maybe even Restream. But deciding which one delivers the best results without pulling all your hair out can feel impossible. Well, today I'm going to help you cut through the noise. We're going to review the top platforms based on ease of use, quality features, and content repurposing. And make sure you stick around because the difference between a tool that just streams and a tool that creates and repurposes your content effortlessly could actually change your whole workflow. So let's dive in. Hey, I'm Mike Russell from Music Radio Creative, and today we're going to look at how to stream like a pro in 2026 and beyond. Now, before we compare the software, let's quickly get some key factors we need to consider. Number one is quality. Can you get a clear video and crisp audio aiming for maybe 720p, 1080p, or even up to 4K? Number two, ease of use. How easy is it for you and your guests to join and manage the stream? Number three, multi-streaming. Can you reach followers across multiple platforms simultaneously? Number four, repurposing. Can you easily record your stream and create clips for social media later? Number five is branding. Can you customize your stream with logos, colors, and backgrounds? Oh, and spoiler alert, the winner is at the end, so if you want to get to the good stuff, just skip using the chapters down below. First up, it's OBS, the free powerhouse here on my screen. That stands for Open Broadcaster Software. It's famous because it's 100% free and open source. And it's highly customized as well, as you can see, allowing for unlimited scenes. I can just add in scene two like this, and I can just keep adding in scenes as I wish and call them whatever I like. It's just amazing the ability to customize camera views with screen shares and overlays and a lot more here in your sources in OBS. Audio and video control. It does feature a robust audio mixer down here. You can see my microphone is here and anything I share through my screen capture, that's also recorded on a separate channel. So you can adjust the volume here for real time mixing and a professional sound. It's good for advanced use. Ideal if you're a professional or a gamer and you need to do extensive customization and on-screen displays and tickers with a much steeper learning curve. Now, the catch and why it's not the winner is really complexity. It requires lots of technical know-how. I mean, just look at this and look at when I go into the settings and we look at all of these different settings. I mean, I don't know video encoder and encoder presets and audio encoder is AAC. What on earth is all of that? There's a lot to learn here. And you'll also need a super powerful computer as it will use your computer's CPU and in many cases, the GPU to do your recording and live streaming. And by the way, with guests and multi-streaming, OBS actually lacks built-in features for adding remote guests. There's no invite link as far as I'm aware. And multi-streaming, well, you'd have to rely on external plugins and third-party tools like Video Ninja or something like that, which will just add complexity. You can't multi-stream out of the box with OBS. And finally, on post-production, you won't find features like text-based editing here or built-in teleprompters or AI tools for making short clips inside OBS. It really is right there for streaming with complexity at it. Thank you. So a checklist for the initial OBS studio. Well, quality, yes, green tick. You can stream in 4K and above, really. Whatever you can set up in the settings can be done. Number two, ease of use. It's a red cross, I'm afraid. Very complex for beginners to get your head around, and you need to really be quite tech savvy to use OBS. Number three, multi-streaming. Yeah, I guess that's a green tick because you technically can if you're willing to fiddle about. It'll take you some time, but it's definitely possible. Number four, repurposing. Well, that's a red cross. Once you stop recording, you get one file dropped onto your computer and maybe your stream uploaded to wherever you've streamed to, but it definitely doesn't automatically convert everything you've done in your stream into short clips that can be shared on Reels or TikTok or wherever. And number five, branding. Well, that's a green tick. If you're willing to spend enough time customizing your scenes and sources over here, you definitely can add your own branding, but it will take you a while. Next up is StreamYard. It's a tool designed for bringing in guests and runs through a web browser, so it's easily accessible on Mac or Windows. You don't need a super powerful computer. You can go in here and you can create live streams like so and stream out to all of your different platforms that you have available. You can also make a pre-recorded video, but you will need to, of course, upgrade the plan to start recording or streaming on your platforms. You also get a library of your recordings. You can set up all your destinations here and even pull in team members to work with you. So now let's look at a few things from StreamYard. Quality, yes, it's definitely a green tick. You can go up to 4K, but at a price you'll need to pay for that. 
Ease of use? Well, StreamYard, I would say, is extremely easy to use, especially for podcasting and bringing in guests. So we get another tick on that. Multi-streaming, again, is supported, so you can go to multiple destinations and it allows you to bring in comments, display banners, add custom backgrounds. This is all really good. It's web-based, so anyone can easily join using a link. And then for branding, well, I'm afraid it's limited for customization compared to other advanced tools, and its editing suite is really quite basic from what I've seen, often keeping horizontal framing even when you're trying to create vertical clips. And for repurposing, again, no functions to easily do that and convert your stream into shorts or other social media platforms. And the catch really is the cost. StreamYard is actually noted as being the most expensive. I, by the way, had to log in to see this pricing, but now I can actually see it. You need to pay the advanced price to get the 4K local recording. You won't get it on the standard core plan. So do be aware of that. And if you're streaming to eight destinations, you'll pay even more. That could cost almost $89 a month. Now we'll move on to tool number three, and it is Riverside. Now let's talk about this tool. It combines high quality control and advanced software with simplicity in its web-based platform. It's my go-to option if I want to easily understand how to streamline content creation. And it's really suitable for you if you're a beginner, a podcaster, or even a large business. So number one, quality. Well, recording, it really is so easy. The core feature here is setting up a studio and locally recording your content. This means you and your guests can join a studio and you're recorded locally. So whether you've got a bad internet connection, both you and your guests will be recorded in RAW up to 4K, which is really good. So if your internet connection is bad and drops out completely, the recording still goes in your browser and keeps everything clean and high quality. This overcomes the biggest limitation of things like OBS or StreamYard that rely on the guests being connected 100% of the time via the internet. Number two is ease of use. Well, yes, it's really easy. You don't need powerful or complex installations or plugins or settings. You just go straight into a studio and you invite the guest by copying a link and sending it to them. So that's super easy. And you can invite a producer to come and work with you via the invite button here. Anyone can come as a guest, as a producer, as an audience member right here inside Riverside. There's also round the clock support available to help and troubleshoot whenever you need. Number three, let's look at multi-streaming. Well, unlike OBS, Riverside supports it out of the box here. We can select all of our different accounts and stream to them all at the same time. This is so easy to do, unlike OBS, which needs plugins, and also it will use more internet bandwidth to multi-stream inside Riverside. It's super, super easy to set up. And the killer feature, it's right over here, OmniChat. Live stream chat takes you into a place where you will be able to see all of your live stream comments from every platform you're streaming to in one place. That is a game changer. Well, Riverside is a complete all-in-one tool for handling your recording, podcasting, live streaming, clipping, editing, and publishing. Just look at this feature, Magic Clips. Not only does it choose the best segments, about one minute, by the way, that can be converted into shorts right here by just sharing straight here from the platform, it also rates them in terms of how likely they are to go viral, telling you top choices and maybe clips that also have good potential. They're optimized for vertical social media. You can also go in and edit a clip with the wonderful Riverside text-based editing, which is not supported by OBS or StreamYard. You can also do co-creator notes. So if I want, I can leave a comment here and say, this is awesome, and actually share that with my producer, and they will see the comment right there in the timeline as well. Show notes, as you see, will be written out for you here, along with chapters, which are super important. And there's a built-in teleprompter right here where I can actually type in, this is what I would like to say. The teleprompter will actually move with you as you talk during the whole podcast. It's incredible. You can keep eye contact as you speak. And as for branding, yep, it's got that too. You hit brand and you've got the opportunity to upload a logo, choose a color palette, your textiles, design, the way your captions look, an intro that can automatically be tagged onto every show you make. It's really, really cool. So when you look at the options, the trade-off is clear. OBS gives you extensive customization, but it really demands high technical know-how, a powerful PC, lots of internet bandwidth, and external plugins for core features. StreamYard offers simplicity, but at a higher price point with limited editing capabilities after you finish the show. Riverside, well, it shines because it minimizes the technical gymnastics you need to do for high-quality production. 
It gives you the highest quality raw files, and that's thanks to local recording on your computer and your guest's computer. It also puts in advanced AI features for editing, repurposing, and you're not going to find any of that built into OBS or StreamYard right now. It's almost like you've got a post-production team right there with a multicam editor and studio all right there in your browser. So, which one will you be using? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to try out Riverside, I will leave a link in the description with my own coupon, giving you a free month of Riverside. Make sure you hit like and subscribe on this video. And YouTube is showing a video on your screen now. You should watch next. Thanks.